Ford introduces two new luxurious standard size cars. The 1975 Ford LTD Landau. The 1975 Ford LTD. Back in 1965, Ford introduced the letters LTD as the top luxury trim of their Galaxy line. The two-door LTD became its own model the following year, and later offering sedans, wagons, and even a short-lived convertible. It was so popular that for a few years it outsold its nearest competitor, the Chevy Caprice, by a two-to-one margin. But the LTD was also yet another victim of the 70s gas crisis, resulting in a smaller short-lived LTD2 model and the LTD name being split across two models for the 1980s. And that smaller LTD was quickly forgotten as it only existed as a placeholder until the launch of the Ford Taurus. This is a story of the Ford LTD. This is my old car. Two new ideas. Ford LTD Landau. Ford LTD. Look close and compare. See for yourself at your local Ford dealer. Before I get started with today's episode, many of you know that this channel was hacked last week and the scammer posted his own videos. If you follow me on Instagram at myoldcar1981, you know what was going on. This was entirely my fault for clicking on a link from a scammer posing as a rep from Netflix to offer me a promotion deal. The file downloaded was huge, which I have since learned helped prevent virus checkers from scanning it. I should have known better, but I'm considering it a good learning experience. Thanks to Team YouTube on Twitter, I have regained access to my Gmail account and my channel. I just want to give a huge thank you to all of you who replied and supported me through this effort. There were so many responses I can't show them all, but here are some examples. I am now also on Twitter, since that was a way to reach Team YouTube, but not sure if I will keep posting there regularly. Let me know if you'd like to see my posts there too. Anyway, enough about that. On to today's episode. I will freely admit that when it comes to car names, the cars I was more attracted to when I was growing up, and still do today, are those which have an actual, well, name. One of the first My Old Car episodes was about the Ford Thunderbird, a name so popular it lasted over 40 years. Later the Taurus became so popular that when Ford eventually changed it to the 500, it was so poorly received that they changed the name back to Taurus. Good morning! And of course there is the Mustang, a name so iconic that it was the only car Ford didn't force a name change on when they decided to change all their car models to start with the letter F in the 2000s. But then there was the LTD, a name which to this day, no one seems to agree on what it really meant. I always assumed it was an abbreviation for the word limited which makes sense when you consider the letters LTD was first used as the top trim of the 1965 Ford Galaxy. That itself was another iconic name when Ford wanted to join in on the space race hype of the late 50s. The Galaxy was an all new design for 65 and the LTD trim was popular enough that Ford decided to split it off from the Galaxy to make the LTD its own model line the following year. Once that happened, you couldn't be sure LTD meant limited anymore. Some speculated it meant luxury trim decor Although if you're from Australia, where the LTD line lasted far longer than it did in North America, some there thought it meant Lincoln-type design, since Lincolns were never sold down under. But outside of some early Australia marketing, Ford never specifically stated what the letters LTD meant. And so, like so many other car makes worldwide, maybe the letters were never meant to mean anything. It just sounded good for a car, I guess. Whatever LTD meant, it spelled serious competition for GM, who quickly followed up with their Caprice model, a name that lasted longer than the LTD, and became a popular option for police departments. Ford initially kept their police packages with the Galaxy, as the LTD was intended to be a more luxury themed option, but as I'll note later, the LTD name would later be associated with police cars as well. As with most Ford products, Sister Division Mercury also had their version of the LTD. A name less commonly known today was the Mercury Park Lane, which coexisted until 1969 with the Marquis, a very well-known name that Mercury would maintain in some form for almost four more decades. The Mercury had its own distinct front and rear from the LTD. There were also wagon models which got their own names, the Ford Country Squire and the Mercury Colony Park. Both wagons were typically adorned with simulated wood grain sides, although arguably the Mercury's take on it was a bit more daring in its approach as compared to Ford. There was also a significant change made in 1968 with the Ford's vertically stacked headlamps replaced with hidden headlamps. And of course, being the late 60s, the only power plant that was considered to move cars that were well over 17 feet long was a V8, although six different variants were offered, ranging from a 289 cubic inch 4.7 liter all the way up to a 428 cubic inch 7 liter. But unlike any car built today, the vast acreage that was available under the hood offered plenty of room for virtually any engine. Big thirsty V8s weren't a liability then, although like all automakers as they approached the end of the 60s, it became a liability soon enough. Because of the significant change in look for 1968, one might think that was the start of the LTD's second generation. 
but that wasn't official until the 1969 model year. Noise. There's no getting away from it, right? Although the 1969 model used a similar chassis design as the first gen, the biggest visible change was the overall length. Although the wheelbase only increased by a couple inches, the overall length increased by almost a foot. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. The wagon added a couple more inches on top of that, becoming close to 19 feet long. I remember being driven around in cars this big as a little kid, and watched from the back seat in amazement how far away one would be in front of me trying to walk around the front of the car. As was more common back then, visual changes would be made to the LTD every couple years or so during the same generation. The hidden headlamps would give way to visible lamps, and the hidden lamps now offered on the marquee and the square tail lamps gave way to a longer horizontal tail lamp design by 1971. But the biggest change for 1971 was adding a convertible along with the sedan, coupe, and wagon models. It would be one of the shortest runs for any convertible, however, as it only lasted through 1972. Another restyling occurred in 1973 to comply with new 5 mile per hour bumper requirements. By this point, the front end started to more closely resemble the Thunderbird, so much so that if you saw them on the road together facing the front, casual observers may not have been able to tell which is which. By 1975, the Galaxy was history, so to help fill in that gap, multiple trim options were offered on the LTD, such as the Brome and a new trim for that year called the LTD Landau. The top trim models continued the hidden headlamp look, as well as the Country Squire wagon. Although big wagons have often been associated with the 70s, they certainly didn't die off in the 80s, and those of us who grew up in the 80s knew they were everywhere, with that popularity making it into our favorite movies. Over at Mercury, they began using the name Grand Marquis as their equivalent to the LTD Landau, and the Grand Marquis name would become one of the most popular Mercury models for the next three decades. During the second generation, thanks to the end of the Galaxy line, Ford also offered the LTD as a police package. Although you could get the LTD police cars in the smaller 351 and 400 cubic inch V8s for city use, the largest 7.5 liter 460 cubic inch V8 was the toughest option and could reach speeds of over 135 miles per hour. These LTD models would be the start of dominance Ford would have in the police car market over the next 35 years. Before the LTD would end its second generation in 1978, the looming gas crisis was taking its toll on Ford's dependence on big cars and big engine displacement. In 1977, Ford introduced the LTD2, which was intended to be classed as a smaller intermediate model, effectively replacing the Ford Torino and Grand Torino. Mercury offered the same car as the Cougar, replacing their Montego line. However, calling it an intermediate was a stretch, literally, as the LTD2 coupe was still over 17 feet long stretching over 18 feet long for the wagon, and it still offered many of the same V8 engine options as the LTD. The same platform would also be used for Ford's El Camino competitor, the Ranchero. The LTT2 and Ranchero would only last until 1979, as their sales were dominated by a downsized version of the Chevy Caprice. It also didn't help that the LTD2 was also competing directly with Ford's own Thunderbird. The LTD2 came and went quickly, as Ford put much more emphasis on its new Panther platform that debuted for 1979. The all-new Ford LTD for 1979. Although GM was transitioning away from rear-wheel drive body-on-frame cars, Ford maintained that design for the Panther platform, which continued to be a popular choice for police cars, as repairs for a body-on-frame car were cheaper than unibody front-wheel drive cars. When not used for police cars, Ford marketed the LTD as a more luxury-themed option, and considered it more of a competitor to the Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. The Country Squire name would continue for the wagon models, still usually adorned with simulated wood paneling, and although they were still popular, much of the younger generation considered the fake wood a holdover from their parents' generation, which is likely how the hideous Wagon Queen family truckster was born for the movie National Lampoon's Vacation. This is the automobile you should be using, the Wagon Queen family truckster. You think you hate it now? But wait till you drive it. Underneath the truckster was a 1979 LTD Country Squire, heavily modified by Warner Brothers for the movie, not just with more outlandish wood trim, but also a complete reimagining of the front and rear. And even the rear quarter windows were shortened in height. Why? Just for an excuse to put on more fake wood, I suppose. If there was any movie that could consider a car to be a central and beloved character, and all the better for it, this would be it. Just a year after the Panther Body LTD began, Ford dropped a Landau name for the LTD drop trim, 
in favor of Crown Victoria. One of its trademark styling elements was the brushed aluminum B-pillar that stretched across the roof as a throwback to the 1955 Ford Fairlane Crown Victoria. They were still big cars, but the Panther platform was several inches shorter than the previous generation LTD. Still, with three different V8 engines being the sole power plants, the LTD Crown Victoria wasn't fitting the early 80s trend of downsizing. Although over 350,000 LTDs were sold for 1979, that number dropped by nearly two-thirds by 1982. So changes were clearly needed, but Ford wasn't ready to give up on the LTD name. By 1980, Ford had been enjoying a significant bump in sales thanks to the popularity of its Fox platform, with its most popular Fox body model being the Ford Mustang that began the year before. Ford expanded the Fox lineup to include a new version of the Ford Granada beginning in 1981. Ford still saw the LTD as a valuable name and wanted to continue using it to designate its more luxury trim models. Can I get some uh, extra mayo? Certainly, sir. As a result, the Granada name would only last through 1982, being rebranded as the LTD for 1983. What the hell are you doing? The full-size LTD Crown Victoria remained, so for the first time, the LTD name would be shared across two very different cars. Mercury went back to using the name Marquis, without the Grand for its version of the smaller LTD keeping the Grand Marquis name as the LTD Crown Victoria Twin. Although one trait that both LTDs shared was that they were both rear-wheel drive, a trait that Ford's competitors were moving away from in their smaller cars, thanks to increased popularity of front-wheel drive cars. Having the LTD sharing its platform with the Mustang provided Ford the opportunity to make a performance version of the LTD, named the LTD LX, beginning partway through the 1984 model year. Although combining luxury and performance is commonplace in cars today, it was less so in the 80s, so the idea seemed to go against what a typical LTD owner would prefer. The LTD LX came standard with the Mustang's 4.9 liter V8 and was the only LTD to ever have a tachometer on its dash, which itself was odd considering the LX was only available with an automatic transmission. Finding a good example of an LTD LX today is a tough find, as they only lasted through 1985, which has 3,260 models ever made. While the smaller Fox body LTD was in production, behind the scenes, Ford was undertaking one of its most daring and ultimately hugely profitable car designs, the Ford Taurus. The Taurus would be front wheel drive and have a jelly bean shape that bared no resemblance to the LTD it was scheduled to replace. With the launch of the Taurus for the 1986 model year, the smaller LTD was history, but Ford hadn't given up on the LTD name as it continued to be used for the larger LTD Crown Victoria. Unlimited technology from the whole universe and we cruise around in a Ford POS. Having both the names LTD and Crown Victoria on the large rear wheel drive sedan had originally made sense to distinguish it from the smaller LTD. However, when the smaller LTD was dropped, it just made for a needlessly longer name, at least in my opinion but clearly Ford continued to see value in the LTD name. However, as a redesign was being planned for the 1992 model year, the new design would take on many of the styling traits of the hugely popular Ford Taurus. Keeping the LTD name would be a reminder of Ford's square body past that they were clearly trying to distance themselves from, resulting in the LTD name being lost to history in 1991. Even the famous Country Squire wagon was lost to history as well, as Ford instead offered the wagon body on the Taurus and figured if Ford buyers wanted an even more passenger space, they'd buy an Aerostar minivan instead. The Crown Victoria, Taurus, and Aerostar are all featured in their own mile car episodes, so be sure to check them out too. I drove it to the prom. <laughs> Today, when those of a certain age hear the name Ford LTD, they probably remember the huge sedans and wagons of the 70s. Although if you're from Australia, you probably have a much different memory. Maybe they still consider the LTD to be the Lincoln type design, or was it short for limited? No one today likely knows for sure what the letters LTD was ever supposed to mean, but for anyone who knows cars, LTD is simply synonymous with Ford. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid 2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. Hasta la vista, baby.